Hey guys, this is Jeff with Fluent American. So we're gonna be analyzing conversation between native speakers to try to identify what are the techniques they're doing to sound most natural in English. If these are things that you struggle with in American English pronunciation and you wanna sound more natural, this is the video for you. I was having a bad week racing and you're giving me pointers. You gotta pedal, you gotta keep pedaling. And at the time I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Okay, so I'm gonna play that again. Let's maybe stop at pointers. And I want you to think about where is he pausing? Where, where could we put the thought groups? If there are any pauses, what words do you think are being stressed? And what do you think the intonation patterns are that you hear? Give me one second. He was just 10 years old. I was having a bad week racing, and you're giving me pointers. Any thoughts? Where do you think the thought groups are there? Um, I guess there is a pause between racing and end. Great. Uh huh. So there's going to be a pause there. Okay, so I was having a bad week racing, and you were giving me pointers. What words do you think he was stressing? I can play it again, too. Um, bad week, I guess. Which word do you think gets the heavier stress, bad or weak? Um, maybe play it again. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay, I'll play it again, down to pointers again. Years old. I was having a bad week racing, and you're giving me pointers. Um, I changed my mind, probably racing and pointers. So it's Tracy racing and pointers. Okay. That's why we listen again. We can always change our mind. That's fine. Um, last key things. What, what do you think the intonation patterns are here? So you think we're saying racing or racing? Rising or falling? I can play it again too. And then same thing for pointers. Do we think we're saying pointers or pointers? Are we rising or are we falling? Years old. I was having a bad week racing. And you're giving me pointers. Um, probably the first one is falling, the second one, um, raising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so notice how he says, I was, having a, I was having a bad week racing. I was having a bad week racing. Let me play that part again. I was having a bad Ra week racing. I was having a bad week racing. I was having a bad week racing. I, I like that fall. I think that makes sense. Um, this is actually something I'm going to talk about in our video later today. But you, you have this, like, three-word... Um, combination here, like bad week racing, so like bad adjective, weak noun, but then racing noun. It's like really what's happening is the bad week is describing the racing. So you have this, this three word combination, and if we're stressing racing, then that means bad is probably going to get a slight stress as well. So typically, if you get a pattern like this, it's going to be like first and third, slight stress on the first one, heavier stress on the third one, and then. You said again the false, like a bad week racing. I was having a bad week racing. Okay. And you said for pointers that you think maybe it's a rise. Let's listen to pointers again. For when he was just 10 years old. I was having a bad week racing. And you're giving me pointers. And you're giving me pointers. I would say he actually mm -hmm. kind of has another thought group. Like, and you were... He kind of holds war a little bit. And you were pause it's like he's kind of like thinking about what he wants to say next and you were giving me pointers um i think for me the pointers is almost like a point rising nerves and you were giving me pointers you were giving me pointers i want to hear it again because he may have also even be stressing pointers instead of giving let's kind of see what he's doing it's 10 years old i was having a bad week racing and you're giving me pointers and you're giving me pointers. And you're giving me pointers. I'll just hear that one more time. And you're giving me pointers. I feel like it's almost on giving. I, I think pointers may get a slight stress, but I almost hear... For me, the giving is a little bit stronger. You're giving me pointers. You're giving me pointers. Any questions for me about this this first sentence here? Feel good? So point... Pointers is like uh, rising and then falling. Yeah, and this type of combination is pretty common. Okay, um, 
what you'll often see with intonation when we talk about intonation like rising and falling I'm usually referring to like the last syllable of the thought group okay so pointers two syllables um, also note that for pointers that T is going to be silent because it's after letter N so instead of pointers it's usually gonna be pointers pointers you're giving me pointers um, so typically we're gonna fall on this last syllable and typically what happens in English is you're gonna do the opposite right before it it's like pointers pointers you're giving me pointers why do we do this we do this so that way it helps kind of regulate like the the pitch and the intonation a bit because like if you keep falling it's like pointers pointers and then we're getting really really low so to kind of stop yourself to make it sound more natural so that way you're not going super high sometimes and then super low sometimes what we're going to do is we're going to modulate it by doing the opposite slightly before it so if we know we're going to fall then the syllable before it we're going to go up a little bit pointers pointers so that way we always kind of stay close to like this median line we don't go too high we don't go too low we stay relatively close to that level okay other questions about pointers there or anything else here is that okay okay for me okay <laughs> yes sorry i know we were on mute um okay let's take a look at the the next line and you're giving me pointers you gotta pedal you gotta keep pedaling it what do you think stress is in that little section there? It's like you've got to pedal, you've got to keep pedaling. Where do you think the stresses are? I guess gotta and pedaling. Okay. Any thought groups besides like the exclamation point? So like, so we have a thought group there naturally because it's the break. Any other thought groups? Do you think these are each kind of? one for each also what do you think is the intonation for pedal and what do you think is the intonation for pedaling and just note you're on mute um probably gotta keep pedaling it's a thought group and okay. pedaling is rising and falling like pointers but i'm not sure <laughs> Yeah, so what I would say for pedaling, let's actually listen to pedaling again. Give me pointers. You gotta pedal, you gotta keep pedaling. And... Pedaling. Ped, you gotta keep pedaling. So it's like, pe, pe, fall. Do, mm. do. You can either have flight or, or flat or a slight rise. Okay. Ped, the. I think a slight rise is helpful. For kind of okay. what we talked about before, so then you can make your fall more dramatic. Pedaling. You gotta keep pedaling. 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 So again, pe fall. Da rising. Ling fall. Pedaling. Pedaling. You gotta keep pedaling. <laughs> Which, if we're stressing pedaling here, my guess is that in the previous sentence, we're probably going to stress pedal. Okay, you've got to pedal. You've got to pedal. Because in these types of structures, what's happening is English really, really, really loves repetition and it loves patterns. Okay, there's a concept called parallel structure, which is, you know, if you, if you want to speak and write natural sounding English, you, ha you have to use parallel structure. It's all about patterns. So for instance, <laughs> Notice that we say the gotta gotta. You've gotta, you've gotta. So we have these repetitions here. If we're stressing pedaling, we're probably going to stress the pedal in the first part. You've got to pedal. You've got to keep pedaling. Okay. Let's um see if he actually does that. He might break the pattern. But let's see. And you're giving me pointers. You got to pedal. You got to keep pedaling. You got to pedal. You got to pedal. It's like yeah. So no, he's he's stressed. I think he's stressing pedal a little bit more than gotta. Okay. Also, just a quick quick note on sound as well. Notice that for gotta, this says your fast D sound. So instead of got to or got to, this is more gotta. Okay. And notice that we have that 
A. Okay. And the reason we're writing this with an A is because this gets reduced. When you say two, that oo is a stressed sound. Okay. It's hard to say you've got two pedal. Like, again, we're talking about like speaking, right? And the goal of speaking in any language is to say something quickly and effectively. Okay. Um, it's hard to say you've got two pedal. If you compare it to you got a pedal, it's easier to say it faster if you say you got a pedal. So that's why we're doing these things. We're using a fast D sound because that makes it easier than saying like a T. A D sounds a little bit easier. And then we're saying an uh sound instead of an O or like a oo because, again, that's a, you can make that sound faster. It's not stressed. Because like you've got a pedal. You've got to keep pedaling. Um, questions for me about those two sentences. Mm -hmm. The I in pedaling is a short I, short right? I. Yeah, so it's not pedaling, it's more pedaling. Pedaling. Pe okay. Mm -hmm. Pedaling. One other thing that I like to compare for these, this little part here with the you've gotta, you've gotta, compare it to the first um, sentence a little bit. I have to play it back. He was just 10 years old. I was having a bad week racing, and you're giving me pointers. You got to pedal. You got to keep pedaling. And... Notice the pitch change. It's like that first sentence, I was having a bad week racing, and you were giving me pointers. You've got to pedal. You've got to keep pedaling. What's he doing? He's raising that pitch. Why is he doing that? Probably because it's like um, not reported speech, but direct speech. Yes, in direct, a way. exactly, exactly. This is um like if you like stand-up comedians, or if you just like telling stories, or you like listening to stories, like with different characters, you want to differentiate. You want to separate the characters. You want to make them stand out, right? So how do you do that? Well, one way is to ch change the pitch. Okay, so he's raising the pitch so that way your listener knows. That, oh, this is someone else. You were giving me pointers. You gotta pedal, you gotta keep pedaling. So, like, little things like that. This is another thing that you can do in your own speech that immediately makes you sound more natural. Change the pitch, change the speed, um, things like that when you're, t when you're using someone else's words. Yeah. Okay. Other questions for me about these, um, these first two? Mm. I don't have any. Okay. Let's play that last section then. Pointers. You gotta pedal, you gotta keep pedaling. And at the time I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Okay, I'm gonna play that again. I want you to try to identify for me. Where do you think the thought groups are? I'll play that again. And you're giving me pointers. You gotta pedal, you gotta keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Where do you think our thought groups are? Probably, I was like, should be a thought group. Okay. Before the I or no? Um, before okay. the I. Okay. Any others? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. probably if it looks another one, but I'm not sure. Okay, so maybe one here. Any others? The cop will be a soccer group. Okay, so after you. Mm -hmm. Any others? Uh,. Why don't you try? So but I'm trying it, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. No, okay. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, let's listen to it again. Um, yeah. So I have all these thought groups marked. See if you want to add any or see if you want to remove any. Let's just, fo just focusing on thought groups right now. Um... Keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Any changes you want to make? Um, 
don't you try it maybe it's like a thought group because it's said really in a fast way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so maybe this whole unit is together yeah anything else any other thought groups you think mm. I'm not sure about any other. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking, let me listen to it one more time, but I'm thinking there may be one I want to add. Keep pedaling. And at the time I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? I would make a change. I would say instead of a thought group between looks and so, I personally think it's actually after the well. It's like, well... It looks so easy to you. To yeah. Uh, so I'd, I'd just move it. Um, okay. Any ideas on stresses? What words do you think are being stressed in each thought group? Probably well. Good. <laughs> <laughs> thought group of one word is usually going to be stressed. That's fair. <laughs> Time. Uh, uh huh. Time. You, but I'm not sure. And it uh, looks so easy to you? No, no. <laughs> it's not. Then, I guess, if I remember correctly. Okay. And you said this. How about for the if it looks so easy to you? Where, do you think it's. Where do you think the stress is going to fall there? Well, easy. Okay, I think it makes sense. Let's listen to that one more time. See if you want to make any changes to the stresses. Pointers. You got to pedal. You got to keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Um, also, done and try. But I'm, I'm always mm. not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're never sure. Okay. Let's listen no. just to that, that last talk we've done. If it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Then why don't you try it? Why don't you try it? I, uh, you. I think it's like, you. I think it's yeah. You. Why don't you try it? Yeah. You, why don't you try it? Um, and at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you. The more I also listen to this, the more I'm thinking that maybe that first part is maybe just one thought group. Like, at the time, I was like, or maybe even... He kind of holds and a little bit, so maybe after and. It's like and at the time I was like, I'm going to hear that one more time. You got to pedal. You got to keep pedaling. And at the time I was like, well. Yeah, cause he knows how, see how fast he does it. And at the time I was like, at the time I was like, um, I think the stress is still on time. I think that's fine. Um, and if it's by itself, we'll get a stress, which makes sense. Um, mm. How about intonation? So we want, so, I want the intonation for and, I want the intonation for like, I want the intonation for well, I want the intonation for you, and then I want the intonation for it. Let me play that again. Okay, so where do you think the intonation is on these words? And, like, well, you, it. Where is our intonation? Give me pointers. You got to pedal. You got to keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Any ideas? Um, oh. And probably is falling. Uh, I think it's fair. Well, well, rising, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, easy and then falling and you rising. That was my impression. <laughs> what did you say for then again? For for which one? For then. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I thought falling, but probably is. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then lastly, for it, what did you say for it? Falling. Falling. Okay. Okay. So let's kind of see what we think. Oh. See if we want to make any changes. You gotta pedal. You gotta keep pedaling and. At the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Okay. 
Uh, maybe yeah. then it's rising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the U before that is rising as well. It looks so easy to you. It looks so easy to you. You know, this is a relatively common construction. You know, like um, someone comments on something you did, and then you want to say, well, like if you think whatever, then why don't you do it? Like something like that. Like it's kind of a way of expressing like some frustration or um, it's kind of like talking back to someone a little bit. Okay. So a relatively yeah. common form, relatively common expression. Um, typically what you're going to do is again, rise. It's like, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Why don't you try it? Okay. And I, I like the fall. I think the rest of this looks pretty good. I would also say that on like, probably a slight rise. And at the time, I was like, at the time, I was like, it's a slight rise, but I think still a rise. At the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Come. Okay. All right. So this is our first paragraph. I think for sake of time, we'll probably just work on this paragraph here. Um, I'm going to listen to this paragraph again, just to double check and make sure we like our markings. Then I'm going to try to read this myself. And this is like an exercise that um, if you're trying to work on your own speech, intonation, pronunciation, and stuff like that, this is an exercise that you can do on your own. Everything that we did here, trying to identify the thought groups, try to, trying to identify the intonation, try to identify the stresses. Um, play it back. I mean, listen to the recording again. And then record yourself trying to repeat it. So like these markings, they don't have to be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes when you do this. Um, the goal is just to try to work on your awareness. It doesn't have to be 100% correct. It has to be more about where do I think the thought groups are? Where, where do I think the stress is falling? Maybe you can even ask yourself like, why is this being stressed? Things like that. Because um, we're working on awareness. We want to develop these skills. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is something that you do a little bit, you know, a couple times a week. You do this for months, and then eventually, like, I really do think it helps you identify kind of the patterns of the language uh, a little bit more um, deeply. Um, so let me play it again, then I'm going to try to repeat what I hear. ...to the sport when he was just 10 years old. I was having a bad week racing, and you're giving me pointers. You got to pedal, you got to keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? I'm going to try to read that again. I was having a bad week racing, and you were giving me pointers. You've got to pedal. You've got to keep pedaling. And at the time, I was like, well, if it looks so easy to you, then why don't you try it? Okay. So again, it doesn't have to be necessarily perfect with the original, but you're trying to capture the same types of structures that are happening. Um, one last thing that we didn't talk a lot about today is time. I think time is really important in terms of how long are you saying these words. Um, what I think a lot of people find is that they say things in a lot of sentences actually faster than native speakers do, especially for advanced um, learners. Um, you want to pay attention to words that are stressed. What are some of the words that he's slowing down on? Okay. Just really quick, wh what are some of the words that you think he says slowest in this paragraph? I guess, well, um, pedaling, um, and don't you, like you. Mm -hmm. I would say also in the first sentence, I was having a bad week racing, and you're giving me pointers. That's, I feel like he's holding something in there as long. I think it might be the and. Yeah. Also that second and as well, and... Um, yeah, so these are some of the words that you want to hold longer. Let's kind of just confirm that one more time. Who introduced her to the sport when he was just 10 years old. I was having a bad week racing. Nothing there is said super long. Everything there is pretty fast. I was having a bad week racing. And you're... G and... Giving me pointers. Pointers. Holding pointers. You're giving me pointers. Pointers is a little bit longer than the other words there. You gotta pedal. You gotta keep pedaling and... Like I said, I think pedaling gets a little bit of, a little bit lengthened, which makes sense. It's a stressed word, stressed words you want to hold longer. At the time, I was like, well, if it looks so Holds that well. And at the time, I was like, well, holding that well a little bit longer. 
And at the time, I was like, well. And then. Easy to you, then why don't you try it? Then he's kind of holding that then. And also that you, like you said. Why don't you try it? Then why don't you try it? Okay. Yeah, so that's another thing you kind of want to watch out for. When you, If you make recordings to compare yourself, see if you can get the recording to be at about the same length of time as the original. Okay, so if you're working with like a 10 second clip, you want your own recording to try to be about 10 seconds, ideally. Okay. Okay. All right, man. Any other questions for me about this paragraph? Mm, I don't have any. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me today. It's always good to hear from you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, too. It's always interesting. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll be making a video about this, so in case you ever want to go back to review it or things like that. Um, thanks for joining me. I always appreciate it. You have a good evening, okay? Same. Take That's care. Good. See you hey. next week. Sounds good, man. Take care. Bye.